In this video, I'll be showing how to build a magnetic stirrer using parts mostly from an old computer, an old monitor. The first thing you're going to need to do for this project is isolate three parts from the computer. The first one is the power supply. This is usually a rectangular steel box located in one corner of the computer and it has a wiring harness connected to it that's pretty easy to locate. You're also going to need the hard drive which will usually have a ribbon cable running to it and will be a black or silver sealed container, usually on the front wall of the computer. You're also going to need the largest fan that the computer contains. Some, fan, some computers may have a fan in the power supply. This computer has one on the back wall, and it also has a very large one on the front that we will be using in this project. Those are the only real parts that you'll need. The rest of the computer can be recycled. I'll remove those parts and go on to the next step. I've removed the power supply, the fan, and the hard drive from the computer, and they can be set to the side for now. Inside the monitor, the component that's going to be required is the diffuser. This is basically a sheet of plexiglass, and in order to get it, the monitor has to be completely deconstructed. I'll show a few steps along the way. I've removed the back cover from the monitor, and both of these boxes contain no useful parts, so they can be removed. What's required is going to be inside this case. I continued digging inside the monitor and removing circuit boards until I was just left with the LCD and the diffuser assembly. All the circuit boards and other material inside this monitor are very recyclable, so hopefully you're able to take advantage of that. Now that I'm inside the monitor assembly, I can peel back the layers. And this is what we're looking for, a pretty thick piece of plexiglass. The rest of this is all trash, and there are two cold cathode displays that contain mercury, so hopefully they can be recycled. The plexiglass can be kept, and the rest of this can hopefully be recycled. With the hard drive, the piece you're going to need from it is the magnets. So in order, the best way to get to those is to go in through the top and remove all the screws. Usually there might be some screws underneath the label, so the best idea is to probe with those using a screwdriver and see if you feel any areas where it isn't smooth. In this case, there's a screw under here. So I'll remove all of these. Now that all the screws are removed, the cover can be pried off. There it goes. Now in this hard drive one of the magnets is secured to the lid just with some glue. So there's our first magnet. This project only requires one magnet so depending on the hard drive it's going to be underneath the read write arm. So right there is the magnet and that can just be removed by unscrewing different parts. Since the magnet is on a metal bracket, that's going to have to be removed. So in order to do that, I'm going to put the magnet in a vise, and I'm going to grab the bracket with vise grips and attempt to bend it. I've made a little bit of room underneath the magnet, so now I can stick a screwdriver underneath there and pull it off. With this magnet, be careful not to let it fly near any other metallic objects or it will shatter.
The power supply is going to primarily be used as a case in this project, so it's mostly going to need to be gutted. I've already removed a bunch of screws from it, so I can pull it apart. If you don't have a lot of electronics parts lying around, you may be able to salvage a bunch of them from this board. All the wires that lead from the board to the power supply to the power connector can all be cut. And these parts can be unscrewed and removed and the fan should also be removed. I've laid out all the parts we've gotten so far. So I switched out the hard drive magnet for a larger one just so that this device will have more power. Here's a piece of the heat sink from the power supply board. There's the monitor power connector, which I desoldered. And I'm also, this, I also have a DC adapter that came with the monitor, and I'm going to be using that too. You're going to need solder, heat shrink tubing. This is a LM317 variable voltage regulator, which I bought online for very cheap. Here's a toggle switch, which will just be the power switch. You could use the uh, switch that came with the power supply, but I'm not going to. Some resistors, a green LED, and a 10K ohm potentiometer. These can also be bought very cheaply online. I'm also going to be using some liquid nails, which is just glue, to glue the hard drive magnet onto the fan. And I'm going to be building a LED array underneath the fan so that I can illuminate whatever I'm stirring. This part is completely optional and, I'm, and it has no real purpose besides for aesthetics. So I'm going to assemble the circuit and the schematic will be in the description. I'm not gonna show the entire process of me building it. Since the magnet has to be glued to the fan, it needs to be made sure that the magnet is in the center of the fan before it is glued. So the best way to test that is to take a magnetic stir bar, put it on top of the plexiglass, put the fan beneath it, and spin the fan with your hand a bit, and make sure that the stir rod stays in the exact center. If the fan magnet were misaligned, the bar would move like that, and that's not desired. So make sure it's in the center before it's glued. I trace the location of the magnet that is the most centered, so that way I can apply some glue beneath the magnet and then line it up using those trace marks to make sure it's in the dead center. Now let the glue set for however long is described on the bottle and then the circuit can be built during that time. I used a Dremel and cut the large circular hole in the diameter of the fan in the top of the box. And I also drilled a bunch of holes for switches and indicator lights in the front panel. Now I'm going to install the switches and indicator LEDs. I marked out the size of the enclosure on the sheet of ple plexiglass using pencil. So now I'm going to cut out that shape on the bandsaw. I used a file to clean up the edges from the bandsaw cutting on the sheet of plexiglass. Now I need to set the holes, line up the holes on it. So I'm going to lay the enclosure on it and clamp it a bit and then use a sharpie to mark the holes. The plexiglass is going to have two sides. One side is going to have a roughness to it the other side will be smooth. Make sure you mark on the rough side since that's going to be the bottom of the... Using a drill gauge I was able to determine that the size of my screw is about 1 8 inch. So I've already chucked up a drill bit and I'm going to use that to drill the four holes in the sheet of plexiglass that I traced. This thick of a sheet of plexiglass shouldn't crack that easily, but depending on how thick the sheet from your monitor was, 
you should use caution when drilling into the plexiglass not to crack it, especially since the holes are very close to the edges. It's been 24 hours and the glue on the magnet has dried. So now um, I've lined up the fan and clamped it onto the casing so that it all it won't move. And now I'm going to use a screwdriver to scratch the area where the holes for drilling this need to be. I screwed the fan to the case and the screws are sticking out slightly, but that's actually a good thing because it will act as a spacer and keep the magnet from brushing up against the piece of plexiglass. With the fan, this one has four wires, a red, black, yellow, blue. The yellow and blue are for speed control and uh, rotation per minute counts, so they're unrequired for this, so they can just be cut off. I've already done a bit of the electrical work, and I have the heat sink for the LM317 glued to a piece of plastic. That's important since the output of the LM317 is not uncommonly also the tab, so if this were to be directly connected to the case, it could short. And I have the potentiometer connected. These two wires are going to go to the power connector. And these, the LED wires, are not connected yet. So I'm going to solder in the fan connection and then start work on the LEDs. I finished building the circuit for this and I was having some issues with the potentiometers burning up but that was because I have a cheap LM317 and I also completed L the LED circuitry so I can have different colored LEDs but that is only an aesthetic thing and doesn't really contribute to the function of this device and if you look at the voltmeter can get the speed control out of it. That works very nicely. And now I'm going to close this up and have it ready for action. Here you can see the stirrer in operation. Using these magnetic stir bars, which are just Teflon coated magnets that I bought on the internet, they can be used to stir most solutions and this thing can be used in long durations for when things have to be dissolved or kept moving and the plexiglass should be able to withstand reasonable heat probably not a boiling beaker but lower temperatures it should handle fine and that has been how to build a magnetic stir out of computer parts thanks for watching